Okay, in this video we're going to look at what's called the slope formula, the slope between two points on an xy coordinate plane. And we'll also explore undefined and zero slopes. Okay? Uh, same so it's the same formula, only these will be horizontal and vertical lines. Okay. Undefined slope, vertical line, or zero slope, horizontal line. Okay. So let's start with these two points on a xy axis, 2, 6, and 8, 9. So we've got the point 2, 6, and the point 8, 9. We want to find the slope of a line between the two points. So we've already learned how to do that by hand. You just draw a line through the points. Okay. Then you get the rise over the run. So we could say, okay, the uh, if I take, say, this point and this point, uh, I would run 2 and rise 1. So my rise over run would be equal to, the run is 2, the rise is 1, so the slope is 1 half. Now, there is a formula to calculate that. And here's how it goes. The slope m, m is a letter that is used in algebra to represent slope for some reason. Okay, just because it's the language and, and the, the letter s is already used for other things. So they don't use s, they use m instead because at the time m was available, I guess. So the slope m between two points x1, y1 and x2, y2. Now, this just means the first point x1, y1, this just means the second point, x2, y2, is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what we can see right away are these little things called subscripts, okay? Now this just means the second y value, this means the first y value, this means the second x value, this means the second, the first x value. So if we have 2, 6, and 8, 9, this would be the first point x1, y1. This would be the second point x2, y2. Every ordered pair, of course, as you know, is x, comma, y, right? So our m would be y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And in this case, y2 is 9. So that's 9 minus y1 is 6 all over x2 is 8 minus x1 is 2. Okay, so we go ahead and calculate that and we get 9 minus 6, 3 over 8 minus 2, 6. And always put fractions in lowest terms. 3 to 3 goes once, 3 to 6 goes twice, and that leaves us with 1 half, which of course is the slope of the line. The rise over the run is a half as we found from the graph. Okay, now let's just prove that you could um, start, have this be the first point, this be the second point, or the other way around, it wouldn't matter. So just for that proof and just for a bit of practice, if you had 8, 9, and 2, 6, go ahead and calculate the slope of the line between these two points, which of course are the same, so you should get the same slope. So go ahead and write down the formula, and y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you remember 40% um, of what you write down. So if you write something down a few times, then you'll really start to remember it. Okay, so in this case, we're calling this x1, y1. We're calling this x2, y2. So this is the first point. That's the second point. So y2 is 6. y1 is 9. So 6 minus 9 over x2 is 2. x1 is 8. So 6 minus 9, if you have $6 and you subtract $9, you're in debt by 3. 2 minus 8, if you have $2, you subtract 8, you're in debt by 6. Or you could change subtraction to adding negatives, okay? That's a positive 2, negative 8 is a negative 6. Positive 6, negative 9 is a negative 3, okay? And now, negative over negative gives what? Positive, right? And 3 to 3 goes once, 3 to 6 goes twice. So our answer is, again, positive 1 half. So it doesn't matter which point you start with, you should get the same answer in the end. Now let's look at these points. 3, negative 3, negative 3. 
and 3, negative 5. And we'll find the slope of a line through these two ordered pairs here. Okay? So, we have negative 3, negative 3, and 3, negative 5. This is the first point, so we'll call it x1, y1, and x2, y2. Okay? So the slope formula is m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, the best thing to do, because we have negative numbers, we should always be in the habit of doing this. Whenever we substitute a number in for a letter, in for a variable, we do this. Parenthesis for y2 minus parenthesis for y1 over parenthesis minus parenthesis. Okay? Now, when we plug in our numbers, we'll make sure we didn't leave out any negative signs. So y2 is negative 5, plug it in there. y1 is negative 3, plug it in there. Look at all the negatives we have. Negative 5 minus negative 3, and you need them all. Okay. x2 is 3, x1 is negative 3. So it should be 3 minus negative 3 on the bottom. So the question is, where did this negative sign come from? It came from the formula. Where did this negative sign come from? It came from the point. Where did this, sorry, subtract sign come from? Came from the formula. And this negative sign came from the, the point. So you've got to use parentheses. It really helps. So our slope is, and remember, negative, negative can be changed to plus, plus. Negative 5 plus positive 3. That's 5 negatives. And 3 positives make negative 2, 2 negatives. Uh, 3 minus negative 3. Negative, negative can be changed to plus, plus. 3 and 3 is 6. So we have negative 2 over 6, and negative over positive is a negative number, and 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 6 goes 3 times, so the slope is negative 1 third, and you should have your negative in line with the fraction bar, okay? So just for practice, please do this example again. It's 3 negative, and do it in reverse, 3 negative 5, and negative 3, negative 3. Find the slope between these two points. And this time call this x1, y1, and call this one x2, y2. So press pause on the video and get the answer. Okay, now I'll do it as fast as I can. We should have m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we need parentheses for the variables. Then we plug in our points y2, negative 3. y1 is negative 5. x2, negative 3. x1 is 3. Now, negative 3 minus negative 5, that can be changed to plus plus. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. Negative 3 minus 3. You're in debt $3. You take 3 away. You're in debt 6. That's negative 6. Or change the subtraction to plus negative. Now it says negative 3 plus negative 3. Three negatives and three negatives, negative six, six negatives. Positive over negative is a negative number. Two and two goes once, two and six goes three times. You should have negative one third. Again, same thing, okay? So, and of course, if we check it on the graph, we found a slope between these two points. And if we uh, get it by hand, you could say run. 3 and rise negative 1. So your rise over your run would be equal to you run 3, run 3, rise negative 1, and that's negative a third. Let's take these points, negative 6, 0, and negative 8, negative 6, and let's find the slope of a line between the points using the slope formula. So that would be the line, and I'll let you do it. So press pause and see if you can do it. And the points are, sorry, negative 6, 0, and negative 8, negative 6. So we should have the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that should be negative 6 minus 0 over negative 8 minus negative 6. Negative 6 minus 0 just gives negative 6. Negative, negative, plus, plus. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Negative over negative, positive. 6 over 2 is 3. So this slope should be 3. So your m is 3 in that case. And you can check it on the graph. You could run 1 and then rise 
three to go from this point to this point. So your rise over your run will be three over one, three. Okay. Now let's have a look at sorry, undefined and zero slopes. So horizontal and vertical lines. So let's take these points here, 3, 2, and 3, negative 4. Okay, if I was to find uh, the slope of a line between 3, 2, and 3, negative 4, okay, this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2, and my slope m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so that is... The first y value minus, or the second y value minus the first over second x value minus the first. And if I plug in my numbers, y2 is negative 4, y1 is 2, x2 is 3, and x1 is 3. So what I get is negative 4 minus 2, change that to plus negative, that's negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6 over 3 minus 3 is 0. Now plug that into your calculator, negative 6 divided by 0. And, of course, that's undefined, isn't it? Can't divide by zero, so that is undefined. And if I drew a line through those two points, the line would go straight up and down. And for this vertical line, the slope is undefined. Okay. Let's take... Um, these two points here, negative 9, negative 2, and negative 9, negative 7. Okay, so find the slope between negative 9, negative 2, and negative 9, negative 7. Okay, so press pause and do that. This is x1, y1, x2, y2, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So, plug in the values, and that would be negative 7 minus negative 2 over negative 9 minus negative 9, which turns out to be plus plus, negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5, negative 9 plus plus, negative 9 plus 9 is 0. Again, dividing by 0, and plug that in the calculator, and you'll find it'll give you an error, so the slope is undefined. And again, if you draw a line through these points, the line goes straight up and down. So for the vertical line, again, the slope is undefined. Okay? Let's take a um, different example. Let's take these points here, 3, negative 8, and 9, negative 8. Get the slope of the line between the two points. We could go. We would go uh, the first y value negative eight minus the second y value all over the first x value minus or second either way. So negative eight minus negative eight over nine minus three gives us, and the negative negative makes plus plus zero over six. Put that in the calculator. Zero divided by six. Put that in your calculator. That'll give you zero, right? So a slope between these two points, the slope between these two ordered pairs is zero. And you can see that the line is flat. And similarly, if you got the slope between these two points, negative 4, 9, and 3, 9, it would also be zero, okay? slope would be zero, okay? So, what you'll find is that when the line is flat, the slope is zero, and of course when the line is vertical, the slope is undefined, okay? Yeah, and that makes sense. I mean, you know, the, if you think about, you know, the floor, the floor has a slope of zero because it doesn't, there's no slope at all. I mean, it doesn't slope. But if you have, you know, 
so you know here's your ruler and it's on the table the table is slope zero if you lift it up now you know it has a positive slope and you know or that's positive slope, and, and it's going up the hill and you know if you put your ruler straight up that's the highest the biggest slope you can have so that's a, a you know undefined slope so the wall in your room has a slope that's undefined it goes straight up it's, it's the, the biggest slope you can have straight up and down okay so when things are flat, there's no slope at all, but then they might tilt and, the, and, 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 you know, that would be, and this would be a steeper slope. And then eventually, um, that's the biggest slope we can have. It's, it's a wall basically. It goes straight up and down, undefined slope. 